Welcome to the Film of Steins, the podcast where we discuss all things movies. Join us as we dive deep into the latest releases, revisit classic films, and explore the art of cinema. Whether you're a film fanatic or just love a good flick, we've got you covered. From Hollywood blockbusters to indie gems, we'll be breaking down the storytelling, and cinematography, and everything in between. So grab some popcorn, sit back, and get ready for some cinematic magic. If you like what you hear, please consider subscribing to our Patreon at patreon.com slash film We offer tiers at the $1, $5, and $20 level. For the $5 tier grants the ability to request films for future episodes. This is the Film of Steins, where movies are more than just entertainment, they're an experience. They're an experience. All around you. You. And welcome back to another episode of the Film of Steins. Thanks for tuning in. I'm thrilled to be here today with my special, my turtley club friend, Lucy. Turtley club? The turtle club? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll take I'll take Turtle Club. I'll, I'll take Turtle Club, friend. Okay, good. So, hello, everyone. You can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for new episodes of The Film of Steins covering all sorts of movies, including recently the Insidious Chapter 2 film, our Patreon-exclusive M. Night Shyamalan ranking of all of his filmography, The Visit, the M. Night Shyamalan film, The Last Voyage of the Demeter, and, of course, the best film of late, Troll Hunter. But today we're discussing an interesting film. I've been looking forward to seeing it. I have been a little bummed, not in any serious way, but I'm bummed to see that not make as much money. Or I should say I'm bummed to see it not make comparable money to the Spider-Man film that recently came out. The Jeff Rowe directed Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Mutant Mayhem. Is that how you say that? Mutant Mayhem. Mayhem? Mayhem. Mayhem. I would say mayhem, mayhem, but fast. I guess I've never seen mayhem spelled out. Now now I'm kind of looking at it. It looks like just mayhem. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm excited today to talk about this film because this is really my first venture into the Turtles universe, pretty much. I've played some arcade games here and there at the arcade, but I've never really been a turtles fan i believe i've seen maybe the earlier live action movies but to be honest i'm not sure i don't remember them tell me some of your thoughts on the turtles did you like this movie i like this movie quite a bit i think i liked it better than um spider-man although it's not really fair to compare them they're they're very drastic and they both have almost a similar style but not really you know, they. I think each one has their own style, but it it really gets compared to um, across the Spider Verse. And you know, I guess I'd hate to compare it to, and I'm sure the director's sick of the comparison too. But I do like it better than um, across the Spider Verse. I thought it was funny. I thought it was cute. I just really like what they did here. You know, um, yes, we have another, yet another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles origin story. I mean, I guess just origin story in general. We get a lot of these. Yes, we get a lot they, of They those. don't go very far, it seems like. Nope. No, they don't. I guess you got to appreciate the MCU for that, at least. They take origin stories and run with them for 65 movies. But I I like that. I like a new origin story. You know, they're not here to stay canon. Is that how you would say that? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. I guess so, yeah. Yeah. They're not here for that. They're just here to give you some just some fun what could happen with these turtle things so a new take yeah. i appreciate that I, I, like I, that I like that too yeah i don't have a lot of experience with the turtles either besides some of the earlier movies um probably the latest one that came out i definitely remember that one is it was it 2015 2017 yeah something like that something like that um and i like that one a bit but i've heard it's underrated i'll have to check that out i i think so too i think it's underrated I didn't know. Well, I didn't know it was underrated. I thought it was liked. I thought it was loved. So, yes, I agree. It's underrated. If <laughs> that's just my read on the internet, it just it oh, seems okay. that way. I don't. I don't really know. I was curious about this movie rating across the board, relatively high. I was just like, well, these just feel like the peop- the camp that was like, you know, this is better than Spider-Man Across the Universe or like, you know, kind of being kind of contrary to the popular belief. And uh, there might be some truth in that, but I do think this movie is 
really, really great. I think this movie's really great. I think it's very shallow and is a little bit more appealing across the board to every demographic, with the exception of the art style. We'll get into that. But I, uh, and I appreciate that. It didn't, it didn't try to make any deep cuts here and there or set up really anything kind of grandiose like Spider-Man does. And I, I appreciate that. It feels very kind of complete with, and it leaves you on a little bit of like a cliffhanger, that, you know, a little tease to give you more. And I think that's very cool. I think it's very cool. I didn't expect the coming of age adjacent kind of uh, like subplot here, but that makes a lot of sense. If you're tackling this from the angle of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I guess I guess the ninja part's not really all that important, but the Teenage Mutant Turtles is pretty important to this, what I'm about to say. Uh, being kind of, or feeling kind of alone in the world and not having friends and be able to experience the teenageisms of the world. And they kind of th- do through a voyeuristic lens. They go see the the drive-in movie and they watch people do teenage things and It's very sad and one note, but it's a very effective note. It's very not. It's very good in that way, and it's excellently performed, with the exception of um, Jackie Chan. He's not a voice actor, but um, it's cute that he's in here. But I think the kids did great. I think the the turtle our turtles did amazing. I love Jackie Chan. You like Jackie Chan? Did an amazing job. I thought he did better later in the movie, but when we were introduced to him, his voice acting is garbage, I think. I think it's so bad. Oh, no. Bad. Take that back. Um, I, That's I, I, my boy. I'm just like, when, when we were, like, literally when we were first introduced to him, I was like, there is no way this is the final cut of Jackie Chan delivering these lines <sighs> as, as, um, as Splinter. But later when he saves them and everything, I'm like, okay, he's starting to... I feel like he really kind of started to fit the character, and maybe maybe that's a personal problem. But I don't uh, his his cadence and his cadence match with the cadence of Mis- Master Splinter is just not right. It's just not adding up, and that's fine. That's fine. That's a most animated films don't have good voice acting, so it's very surprising. The turtles, I think, do a pretty great job across the board. So I uh, that's that's a very small mark in my head. Okay. But I did, I, I did think it was cute that they did manage to get Jackie involved in this, and then we got some Jackie Chanisms later in the movie, which was very neat. Yep. Love that. But uh, I did want to say one thing off the top, so we can maybe bring it back up. The animation is very cool. It's very now becoming typical of our time with, you know, like the Puss in Boots thing and the Mitchells and the Machines and Spider Man. And everything. It's very cool that we're starting to flex like crazy animation. But the art style here is, uh, I guess, especially the the new thing. Like, we haven't seen an art style quite like this. You know, Mitchells and Machines and, and uh, like, traditional cartoons kind of mold together. And then we, we have kind of a literal adaptation of comics to Spider-Man Across the Universe. They kind of fit that angle. And then we have this weird kind of mix match of animation happening in Puss in Boots. So it's very... Neat, almost stop motion like, and just hyper realized uh, DreamWorks animation and art style. But the art style here, man, I had a I had a hard time dealing with because I was just I was caught up on why are all the people so fucking ugly? Did you feel that? Everyone has fucked up proportions, fucked up faces. I was just like, what is going on here? And I is it are they trying to play up humans are gross and they they are the enemy to the turtles at the beginning at the very least well i guess let me start off with i really like the style that they went for here i thought it was very uh kind of 90s sure uh, okay ren and stimpy sketchbook Doug, kind of yeah. and they have that they have that like exaggerated look of um the characters and you know, maybe the maybe it was the turtles here that weren't exaggerated enough, like everybody else was. Maybe, yeah. But um, no, I I didn't get that. I I just thought that was you know part of the style. It didn't really um stand out to me that much because it fit in my head with what they were going for here. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense because I feel like turtles are real. I don't know when the turtles first came out, but they feel very nineties. 
they feel like they fit in with Ren and Stimpy and Rugrats and just kind of this weird, gross animation and art style. And that's 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 uh that that, that works for me. I'm sold on that. I am. I don't dislike it. I just think it's. I had a hard time negotiating that in my head, and it's thematically sort of interesting because it, humans are the gross people here. You know, they they have gross. You know, they they're rejecting our turtles, right? But the uh, I guess the way I described this in my head is it all looks like concept art. All the scribbles and like unfinished stuff, it feels very concept arty to me. And I so I also think that's kind of neat that they were they're they able to make a cohesive thing out of concept art. It's, that's funny that because that's it's like the opposite of a concept art is. <laughs> it's incomplete. It's just a concept. But I, I I like that. I like that. But I do like what you said about the '90s. That that rings very true. I didn't think about that. Very nice. Yeah, it, there's definitely a turn here with animation, and we've seen a lot of great new um animation in films pixar better pick it up yeah like you brought up puss and boots and then we have spider-man here that that was um revolutionary and this is just something else that's so creative and fun and i don't i i don't know i i don't know when the turtles began i'm i i thought it was in the 80s but that's just me spinning out a number that would make sense. You know, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles give me, like, my brother, my older brother vibes. And he's very, you know, he, he was a 90s kid. You know, he, yeah, was, he was a proper 90s yeah, kid. Yeah, he was a proper 90s kid. And he was, a, you know, he was a punk. He was a skater. He did the whole, you know, almost like graffiti drawings kind of thing. Like, it just, in my head, this is him. Not necessarily what the content here in this film, but just the whole style this film gives, um, along with the soundtrack, which is probably top favorite soundtracks right now. Um, it's a very cool soundtrack. This year, yeah. yeah. And they just fit it in so perfectly well in um, the scenes they do here. And I will say the one thing I kind of, not to compare it endlessly to Spider-Man, Spider-Man animated films. I did. I do kind of prefer the use of the music in Spider-Man over this because it was diegetic, and that's what Miles was listening to. It's Miles' music, so I do. I do appreciate that a little deeper. But the uh, the soundtrack here is just it is awesome. I can't, and I I hate licensed music and soundtracks. Mm-hmm. It's stupid, but this is awesome. They I don't yeah. So anyways, yeah, I think it it definitely fits here, and you know we even have. I'm not exactly sure which turtle turtle it is or if it's all of them, but there's some, you know, skateboarding here. There's like the pizza eating, which, you know, pizza eating shouldn't be dedicated to a time. But when I think of pizza in cartoons, I guess I do think of the turtles and I think of uh, Max in uh, a Goofy movie. Or- what is that, year 2000? Year 1999? Yeah, around there, I think. Or, uh, and Domino's started delivering in the around 90s. That, yeah, so it's just <laughs> it's just that time, and I, I love what they did here. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad that you genuinely think, or you genuinely feel stronger about this than Spider-Man. I like that. Cause, uh, Spider-Man, you know, amazing. And I, the only uh, thing... <laughs> oh. amazing Spider Man. Damn, cut that out. No. <laughs> but really, the only standout part from Spider Man for me, you know, just personal here was the ending because I hadn't seen anything that cliffhanger ish before. It's a, big <laughs> it's a huge cliffhanger, and you know, Miles fits more like the kind of gangster uh not gangster just kind of like street i don't know what i'm trying to say here but just kind of uh like street urban kind of style hip-hop adjacent yeah yeah very hip-hop you know he's got his he's got his jordans Jordans and you know i think his jordans are like at one part in the movie they're on a shelf too they're not on the floor they're probably these highly you know loved expensive ass Jordans that he got on day one. He's hasn't he's never gonna wear them. <laughs> and 
And he's got the hoodies. He's, you know, very, very urban. He's real into the music. He's real into the music, yeah. yeah. But then over here we have, like, the punks. But it's funny because it's similar but different, too. I like that, too. Especially today. We've got a real merge of it in today's time. Yes. So that kind of helps... I guess it kind of helps build the argument that these films need to be compared in some way, which is pretty cool. And also in their personalities, uh, Miles is more, maybe more reserved. Yeah. You know, he's just to himself. He's in his music. He's in his thoughts. But the turtles here are goofy as fuck, which is... And they want to be proper teenagers. And yes. you know, it's just kind of funny because no one, that's like not a thing anyone ever wants. <laughs> no one wants to be a teenager. You know, you just are a teenager and you have a good time or not. But they they want to be proper teenagers. It's so stupid, but it's it's perfect. It's so fitting. It's so fitting. And I, I just love, I love it. Yeah, I'm glad they took the angle of them actually being teenagers. I don't know if that's practiced in the like 2D animation series and stuff the, uh, over the years or the other, some of the other movies. But I'm, if I remember correctly, in the first two live action films from 1990 and 1992 or whatever, they were basically adults. They may have been like, in quotes, teenagers, but their teenagerness didn't matter. And I do appreciate that they really took a deep uh, turn into, it's not really important to the narrative per se, but it is the sub the subplot here that, you know, drives them to do X, Y, and Z mm-hmm. and work with April and everything. And I, so I do like that a lot. And then, yeah, Miles, that's probably one reason I like the Spider-Man films a little better is because Miles is a little bit more of a internalized character. You know, he's he's brooding. He's he's also a teenager. And I guess in Across the Universe, he's in college. Is that? Uh, no, I think he's a senior. He's a senior. Oh, OK. And so he, he he's just different. And I, I like that. I like that you call these guys punks because they are they are punks. That's fun. Yeah, I like that too. I like that. Uh, it's almost like they made them, you know, your younger years of teenagers, not quite your senior year. You know, these are probably incoming freshman turtles, not Miles about to go to college. So maybe unlike the other versions of the turtles in the other films. Where they're just vigilantes, basically. Yeah, but here there are, you know, they're they're excited. They're ready. They're too excited, <laughs> which, oh, I which like helps that. sell it. I yeah, it's it. so good. Yeah, I like that bit where I think it was Mikey where he was he wanted to sign his name so he could apply for the or I guess it was the application for the auditions for some theater and he was like you know hopefully in two weeks you know when they're when they're rocking and rolling I can we'll we'll be enrolled. It's like that's stupid, but that's awesome. That's genius. <laughs> this is like the perfect. Like when I say this movie's stupid, it is it is like the nineties kind of stupid. It's yeah. just it's just the proper nineties stupid. That's that's that it's this movie actually. That's a that's a great way of describing that. I like that. And I appreciate I, I, I can't I can't I guess I can't let go of it. I appreciate that too from the the art style of animation then. Cause just, you know, the the king of art style from the nineties is of course Ren and Stimpy. And it's disgusting. It's disgust, yep. disgusting contextually, and it's disgusting art style. And the animation is just beautiful because it's hand drawn, of course. But it's that's and this kind of echoes that in a similar but totally different way, of course. But. Yeah, yeah. And we have a it's like a mix with the '90s and modern times. You know, they they try to give their references here. You know, he references Ferris Bueller and. Adele, I don't know. I think he references Hey Arnold. Yeah, and it builds this character up. It's kind of annoying in one sense because I don't. It's just when people reference things over and over, it's just like ugh, I, just, I don't. I don't like it. But it indicates to me that they just spend a lot of time watching TV and reading yes. or whatever and stuff. And I like that angle a lot. You gotta. Cause I, I personally I had to remind myself that they are cut off from the world and they're kids. Kids annoy the shit out of you referencing shit all the time. Yeah. But that's also part of the turtles. Like, watch any old film that's very similar to this. You know, your punk teenage kids. And they're also going to be using a lot of references and almost cringy shit that they keep repeating over and over like they do here. I mean, they reference Shrek. They they reference so many things. <laughs> And it's like, okay, like that's too much, but but it's not. It's all they know. It's what they live for. Yeah. 
So I I love those small little details, even if they do seem kind of silly, maybe to us now being, you know, old, cultured. I don't know, but it's uh, it just fits so well. I think they do a great job giving it their own personal style with the animation, with the characters, with the story, with the dialogue. Do you like the voice acting? I like the voice acting. I, I Mainly thought, for the turtles. I'm... Yeah. I like the voice acting for the turtles. I do like that they, again, kept teenage voice actors. I don't know if they did that for the other ones, but... I highly doubt I it. I highly <laughs> doubt it, too. So I like that. they. I mean, all these kids are probably, you know, under 17 or under. So I really enjoy that they did that. Seth Rogen was involved in this. Yeah, I saw that, which I'm very surprised. Seth Rogen manages to just trick me every once in a while when it's not a, I don't know, neighbors type of film. Yeah, I'm, I really like when he doesn't do his own things. When he's part of other projects and stuff, Seth Rogen's actually pretty good. He's actually maybe a worthwhile creative. It's pretty interesting, and that may have something to say about his just... He became really involved in Hollywood, right, and stuff, and he made all these movies with, you know, his group of friends and everything, and he got to know and mingle with everybody, and he maybe found a path that he really wanted to take and all and all of that, and I think it's a really strange but cool development because, you know, he's worked with this and the Fablemans and... Yeah, DK. DK, it's like, okay. Yeah. Like, I was expecting to be totally turned off by DK. In the new Mario Brothers movie. And he was fine. I was like wow. Seth Rogen's. He's he's alright. Yeah the Fableman. He was excellent. I Small d- role but. I didn't even know it was him really. Besides when you hear him talk. And then I think you said it. You're like you know who that is. I'm like holy shit. Is that Seth Rogen? And it was fine. He didn't annoy me. So I was very surprised. So it's almost like he needs a team to take his idea and then calm him down or something i don't know yeah or he just you know i guess he was a producer slash writer on this uh with the teenage mutant Ninja turtles but maybe he just needs maybe he's an excellent producer and a little bit of a good dramatic writer you know because he might be a funny guy and all but i i'd be really interested to see a melodramatic piece like the whale or something come out of seth rogan and in, in at least in partiality, does not not in totality, I guess. But however, you know, I think that I'd like to see that exercise come from him after the few things he's done. Yeah. Did he come up with the milking joke? Definitely. <laughs> that was definitely him. Who else would be that? Who, I don't. Who else? Would, I don't know. Yeah. That's exactly that something like a Seth Rogen thing. He was he was probably like, I'm not doing this unless we include this. Like and and how was it? Was did it deliver? Was it? It was okay. You know, it wasn't. It was it inoffen- It was inoffensive. Yeah, it was inoffensive. It was, you know, kind of funny that, you know, we have, you know, our master splinter here, our dad figure, like I fucking told you you were gonna get milked, and they're like, oh, we didn't believe you. Why? Why would that happen? Like that's, uh, uh, that that was kind of funny, but. I guess it helps that it was Jackie Chan too. Yes, he's he's yes. actually pretty funny. Yes, I, you know, I I can't give Jackie Chan enough praise. Not necessarily because he did an amazing job here, but just because you know I I like him, and I was kind of sad that you know maybe we weren't gonna get another Jackie Chan movie. I think the last thing I saw was uh, the Foreigner, which was not a Jackie Chan movie whatsoever. I'm kind of glad he's he's doing something, even if it's voice acting. Did you ever watch the Jackie Chan show? The show? Yeah. Is that what it was called? The Jackie Chan show? I think so. I think where he was collecting little mm-hmm. octagonal uh, objects, like medallion type things, I think. And he had a little sidekick girl, and he's running, ar- over, he's running around different places on buildings and shit and everything. I think it was on Disney. No, I don't think I watched those. I think I'm more familiar with his older older stuff yeah yeah yeah. that's that's most of his filmography i would guess but yeah i like jackie chan too i'm not familiar with him too much really but i know he did introduce a mega iconic fighting style to hollywood and 
you know, completely revolutionize what that can look like on screen. So that's, yeah. I mean, he's going to be forever remembered, at least for that. And I love that they gave Splinter some of his fighting style. Yeah. And, you know, we, we weren't 100% sure on some of the films that the turtles were watching to learn how to fight. But that's, that's hilarious because I guess, you know, some of them look like that could have been Jackie Chan. So that that's awesome that if they did that, they included some of that there. What do you think about Jackie's whole angle of family? That was kind of this like tertiary kind of subplot. I feel like that family is important. And I like that that came out of kind of a New York movie too, because it reminds me of, you know, like American Italians and that, you know, family is kind of everything at the end of the day. I really like that they gave him that because these are his babies. You know, he met them when they were very young. And how fucking adorable were those baby turtles? And I I know you said earlier in the episode that this was very a very one note film, but I don't think I completely agree with you just because of this angle we got from him and just these very sad scenes that we got when uh, we were introduced to his family thing, you know, when when we had that scene when they're still babies and he takes them up to the outside world so they could see and they basically get harassed by humans and I guess that's where we have the Mr. Beast cameo and he pulls on his ear and he's like, hey, is this a costume? And then they realize it's not a costume and everyone's just screaming and pointing and it's just so fucking sad and then... A turtle gets thrown in the middle of the fucking road and is about to get run over and he's just so broken and oh god damn it's so sad it's so sad and then you know skip to when he knows something is wrong with his with his boys he senses something they're out and about all the time he doesn't know what's going on and then he throws them a party And the balloons in the background have turtles drawn on them with their mask. And he got pizza. And he's like, I'm throwing you guys a party to experience the outside because I'm so sorry that I don't let you guys go out there. And he's got cutouts of all the Chris, Chris's. I don't remember. Those were all Chris's? I think so. (laughs) I think. (laughs) I didn't realize that. And. He's just trying his hardest to, you know, love them and tell them it's going to be okay and that he can give them whatever he can as long as it's in the safety of their own home. And it's it's very similar to what I'm sure a lot of parents experience. You know, I'm not a parent. I don't have kids. But letting your kids go for the first time, you know, your kids going to their first sleepover or your kids driving for the first time or your kids going away to college. I'm sure that, you know, tears some parents up. It it really tears some parents up. I mean, some parents go through some psychological shit when this happens to them and then they're home alone. So, you know, I can only imagine some of what he's feeling here. And I think they do a great job letting us know exactly how he feels. And then, you know, that that leads to the I don't know, turnaround moment for him when he realizes that he's as controlling and hates humans as much as uh, our boy uh, Superfly here. And he has this very, um, how do you say that? Resignation. Yeah. like That's what they call that? Yeah. It, yeah, exactly. The, the, when I think of that in film, the the main example of someone, of a character resigning their, you know, their whatever just happened their previous thought Mm -hmm. their previous ideology or whatever is josh and insidious one where he's like no we're not gonna do this with elise or whatever and we're not gonna let her fuck with our child and then he goes upstairs and sees the drawing and stuff (laughs) that is the and you know and then he's like it's been here all along you know he realized you know you know what i'm talking about that's the example i think about when i think and it's a very clean clear-cut example of it so maybe it is actually a decent example but that is that is the example I think of when you when I think of character resignation. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's stupid, but but it's very clear cut here too. Yes. And it's it's effective. It's very effective. 
See, this gets into a little bit of the problem with the movie I have. The more important thing here is the the family unit, the the being with people you love and like, and like kind of you know, and spreading that where it makes sense. Mm-hmm. And we don't get enough of that in an explicit way. It happens through almost like protestal ways, like where we have the turtles saying something, and then Superfly's henchmen are like you know what, you're right, you know, and then they all kind of switch sides slowly but surely. We don't have big moments, not that we need to have a big moment with all of them, but we don't have really any deep family-oriented moments with with any of that. I don't know what it would look like. It's not a problem here. I just wish we could have had a little bit more from that angle because that could have been, they could have, it could have been like a switch and bait kind of thing in a good way where we were set up to think the turtles want to be teenagers they want to be proper teenagers and go to school and yada, yada, yada. And they do like, you know, like they do in the movie. But the real message of the movie is, you know, surrounding you with people that you love and trust and being a little more open minded about what family looks like and everything. And we we kind of get that. And I just wish that was a little bit. I wish that hit you just a little bit harder because they ah. They end it on something stupid as fuck, which is fine. It really is. I just wish for myself, I wish we didn't land with Jackie Chan and that weird ass bug thing hooking up kind of thing. You know, it's just like, ugh. and I get it. It's we're hitting every demographic with this movie, which is it's very neat that, that, that that's even possible. And it's still a very good movie in almost every way. I mean, every way it's a very good movie. It's just there's no way to knock this down really any far like this is an excellent movie period end of story you know through and through but i just i wish for myself we could have gotten something a little more just a little bit more of a gut punch that how important family is you see you feel me a little bit yeah i feel you and i I like what you said that this movie is about you know being surrounded by the people you love and the people you trust and i i before i forget i do like that we have that kind of similar thing happening with Superfly, but it's almost in a cult like situation. Yeah. And I think that might be a little, uh, maybe too specific here, or maybe just what I got out of it because I, I got that, um, gut punch message, I guess, because it's, it's about acceptance and just love in general, whether it's your family or not. And, yeah, they made him hook up with that weird ass thing, and that's kind of weird. And the whole them making out scene was ugh. Yeah, but it makes but, it very effective for little kids too and stuff. And I, I get that it's kind of rounding itself out in that way. Yeah, yeah, they had to, you know, they had to give the kids something here, I guess. Yeah. But I like that they gave him a partner because his kids are grown now and they're going to high school. He's about to be alone and. He's not going to be alone anymore. He's got somebody by him by his side. Yeah, and they do set that up. And they set that up, and yeah, especially from the beginning, he's telling them about how he's trying to find somebody. And I guess it is worth saying too that that she, the bug thing. I'm it. not. Sure, <laughs> it. I guess it's. I mean, I guess it's a girl, right? And that what they said. Yeah. It's um, it's the strange one. It doesn't speak their language. It's the it's just it's the one that's really off and he found he finds love in that and so there's something really deeply beautiful in that too but it's just they take it a step too far yeah. for me but it's still i get it it's super effective and i it's 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 really cool it is really cool and then to keep adding to that you know love uh message we have the humans that help save the day Yes, that and, gave me big like, like the you know like the, ha- the paradigm shift happened everything. But then they were like, "You fuck with one of us, you fuck with all of us." Kind of New York attitude. I like that. And I just thought that was I thought that was really neat. I don't love how quick they are to just change after seeing April's spiel on TV. Maybe has something to say about how vapid we are and we fickle. Are vapid Maybe and something fickle. deeply kind of funny there. But I do like that they all start attacking our kaiju right of course you love this movie more it's got a big monster a big sick in every meaning of the word monster the d- super fly sick and monster is so cool like 
when he changes. He's cool. He's cool anyways. I like that his weird. I like everyone's aesthetic mm-hmm. of the uh, our characters. They're all very neat. But yeah, when they all start attacking him with throwing shit and using you know different vehicles to get the 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 package to where it needs to get you know to give it to the turtles and it's just like I was like okay like this is cool because that's like kind of a thing I think in movies is like New York kind of standing up with each other yeah I think am I just making that up that's just am I just I don't know but that sounds like it's a thing I know right it should be a thing it was not maybe this is the start this is the start good job but before all that before the humans get involved we have this very awful 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 scene where superfly is squishing the turtles and the oh. shells start <laughs> cracking and i'm surprised i did not just immediately start crying when that happened and you reacted the way you did i was like fuck she likes movies more than spider-man <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said to myself. I was, oh my gosh, I I was trying to hold back the tears. I'm trying to hold back the tears now. Don't hold them back. Let, because, them, let them flow. Oh man, that was just, <laughs> uh, like, I don't know what it is about animals getting hurt or maybe my animal heroes getting hurt, but we have that. So I'm already, you know, in my feels about their little your little shell is getting crushed and then we have the dad that he's he's hurt and he can't get back up and he cannot help them he cannot help his kids and then here comes this human and it's like hey man you need help and he's like yes yes i do and, oh my god <laughs> genius so i don't know what you're talking about one note and maybe it is a little one note but that note hit the fucking feels what maybe it's i should it's not one note it's mostly one note (laughs) this is what i mean when i wish we could have just gotten a little bit more from probably jackie chan jackie chan's character what the fuck is his name splinter and that we just we just i feel like we missed a little bit of like we just weren't we weren't rejected enough we needed we got that first fucking gut punch with when the turtles were young and he you know he tried to take them out and then they got that wasn't enough for you no i needed more oh my god i needed more i needed one more instance of just something i don't know it's just it's missing just a little something for me i'm not sure what it is i really am not and but that's i mean that scene though is no doubt probably the best bit in the movie jesus i i that little where just specifically that part where yeah. he's on the ground and he's like the New York guy asks, you know, hey buddy, you need any help? And then whatever he fucking says, and that's yes. probably the best bit in the whole movie. It probably is, and it's it's a, it's effective. But ah oh, man, I just don't know why it didn't hit me like I wish it did. Maybe this movie, it's a rare case of maybe this movie I wish it was just a little bit longer in the middle part. Yeah, maybe, and you know, it's it's yeah, it, it's, it's all up. The- personal thing too because i think spider-man hit you a little bit more than it did me maybe not on the field you know i'm not saying you were crying here but no i don't cry (laughs) okay (laughs) but it just you know something about miles something about his internal i don't know i i I don't know maybe it's a relatable thing kind of kind of thing happening here because you're a little bit more of a punk i'm a little bit more of a hip-hop maybe there's something to that yeah maybe Cause I'd hang out with the turtles all day before I'd hang out with Miles. I'd probably hang out with Miles. <gasps> Oof. I'd see the turtles on the weekends. <laughs> when you're ready for pizza. Yeah. But no, I mean, just, all, I don't know. I, I, I think this movie did a great job showing all the love here. With Jackie getting his partner. The humans helping them save the city. You know, the mutants getting rid of their leader. And being able to express themselves and their voice. I didn't expect Superfly to become a kaiju. <laughs> I didn't either, but I fucking loved it. It was very cool. It was very cool. I was like, because when they were doing the final fight, what it looked like, I was like, this doesn't feel like the final fight. And I was like, this, I'm not, I'm not getting these 
final field. I was like, I was like, this is this is something's off. I was like, I just I didn't know what was going on. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, and then he falls into the then here the water. it is. <laughs> and he gets mutated with all these other animals and stuff. And I was like, damn, this is so cool. Very very cool. Spot's very cool too. But this guy is like a kind of more traditional bad guy. Cool becomes a fucking kaiju. Yeah. We need more. Uh, can we have too many kaijus? No. No, we can't. No. No. Keep making them. I'll watch them. I guess we just had kind of another kaiju thing with our troll, didn't we? <gasps> yes, we did. And they got bigger and bigger and bigger. Which is so stupid, but it was. I, I don't know how people were able to pull. It's just, it's, <laughs> it's it just proves to you that you can take something that you would think is not very creative you know trying out to do yourself very dragon ball style right things just get bigger and the explosions get bigger and people get more powerful yada 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 right but if you just have tight storytelling around it you can just you can say and do whatever the fuck you want it's awesome it's good it's good stuff how'd you feel about that uh montage fighting scene and that's where where they play that um no diggity song and um when we were watching it you said oh look that's an old boy reference, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a really good way of demonstrating our turtles here because they're not really proficient fighters, but they are tough as nails. And so, and they kind of have a Jackie Chan-ness about them, of course, right? And the way they fight. And they, they I love that they use other tools and stuff. And yeah, I loved the panning left to right thing that we, you know, very, very heavy nod to old boys i think old boy whatever the fuck it's called old boy the park john ook korean film no i I liked that a lot and that's it was a fun way of handling a actiony sequence i don't like when you waste you know any minutes of time just fighting it's got to be either john wick style or just fun camera movements you know it's it's you really you, i don't want to deceive people beat up each other it's stupid and it's 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 a less is more situation i think nine times out of ten and is more effective when it's left up to your imagination like a lot of things are but especially i think fighting but i think it's i think it was really fun i thought it was fun and it was quick and I can't think of a better way to kind of demonstrate how mostly capable they are, but like they're still very much uh, students of the craft. You know, they're not the turtles that I would imagine them to be in ten years. Naturally, so and that's that's I like that. There's it feels natural, I guess. Yeah, I really like this scene. I just loved, first of all, the song they paired to this. You know, it's not it's not my old time favorite song, but it just fits so well, and I I just I I really love what they did. They would have you know one turtle with his own fighting style, dressed his in his own way. I don't know if they had stolen the clothes uh, by then or not, but when he would land or land the punch or whatever, it would be boom another um, another turtle, and they just kept doing that. And I don't know, it was it was amazing to do that with four different characters like that. It was just it was pretty cool. Yeah, beautifully animated. I can you imagine something like that coming out of Pixar? No. I guess not no. a lot of Pixar things have fighting in them in general, but like it's just these companies in a good way are out of fucking control with this animation yes. and how much detail and love is going into every single second of these films. Man, Pixar it's unreal how fallen, you know, how much Pixar has fallen. At least from its throne, it's definitely not. It's not making shit as far as animation goes. Uh, Story wise, I it might be, but <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. And this is where I got a glimpse of, or not a glimpse, but this is where the soundtrack just started like kicking in for me, big time, and. I was reading that um, our director here was very inspired by Tony Hawk's soundtrack from the video games, which there's your '90s completely makes sense. And then we have the uh, "What's Up" song that they play in the car, and then they're all like singing along to it. But it's 
not the traditional one, right? I think it's the remix, and uh, just it's cool. It's it's so cool. They're just blasting singing in the car. I don't know. We see them. I think I'm not a Turtles fan. Remember that? But I think the Turtles normally have a van. Yes. And they get that van at the end of this movie, the pizza van. Okay. Thought that was cute. I think if if I'm just reading into that wrongly, that's yeah, whatever. Just let me have it, I guess. But I thought that was pretty cute that they stole a uh, pizza van. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. They could steal a pizza van. What do you think about April? I thought April was okay, and probably because she's the most modern, you know, 2023 thing in this film. You know, I can't relate to her. I can't relate to she. I don't know how to say this. I guess she doesn't have the punkness that the turtles have, or that anyone else really has. Even even our bad guys here. Um, but I I just thought she was okay. You know, they, it was there was nothing really standoutish about her here. And um, I'm also not sure how I felt about the uh, about Leo being attracted to her. Which is, it's fine, you know, he's also a teenager, so that that's a big thing when you're a teenager. You're attracted to, really, a lot, <laughs> a lot of people at that time. And it's immediate, and it's infatua- infatuation, so I, I do like that. And I like that they didn't, you know, make them a couple. They didn't make them get together, so I do like that they had kind of some restriction on that. But, I mean, she was just okay. What about you? She was okay. I did think it was kind of weird that her face was like mostly in proportion compared to everyone else. I thought that was weird. Hmm. She was kind of out of place in that way. Her body made up for that because she was the shape of a like a rumbus or something. She had a weird mm-hmm. body shape, like or like a pistachio or something. Can you see the pistachio? Yeah. She's she's got a weird body shape, but I thought I just thought she her face was a little out of place. It wasn't fucked up enough <laughs> like everyone else. She's and she yeah, she needs to get in line. She's not she's way too modern with for this world. That's why she's made fun of. It's not because she's puking on camera. <laughs> That's funny though. Yeah. That that you know, that's for the, the little ones out there that puke. That's true. It's the kind of stuff that can lose me for sure, but it doesn't because there's just way too much good here for you'd be to be lost anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very I'm very happy with this movie. I'm very happy where animation is going and i can't wait for the next little wave of of films next year you know i don't know if anything else is coming this year as far as big animated films but i can't yeah i can't wait for the next the next wave yeah me too it looks like we're, we're definitely getting a sequel of this i would imagine um it didn't make crazy numbers like spider-man <sighs> did but it it looks like it definitely made plenty of money for Nickelodeon to want to do a sequel. Right. Nickelodeon's not used to this kind of success, so that's good. I'll definitely go watch the sequel at theaters. Yeah, hopefully it encourages Nickelodeon to work with some of their IP. I know they have these SpongeBob movies come out every other year, and they're they're whatever. I haven't seen very many of them, but I'm not sure if. I mean, obviously they're successful enough that they keep handing this license out to do different things with Spongebob, which is, it's neat. They are definitely taking this very liberal kind of approach with Spongebob, at least like, with the art styles and stuff, and just mm-hmm. like, they're, I mean, they're strange. It's it's cool. I like that. It's very Cartoon Network-esque in that way. But I, uh, there is a Garfield movie coming out, an animated Garfield movie coming out, I think, next year. Next year? Okay. Yeah, I I'm not sure if it's coming to theaters. I, I would imagine it is at this point, because I think Nickelodeon's going to... It's got there's this there's got to be this new initiative with animation becoming just the king of cinema now we there's got to be this big initiative of them taking everything they can to to the theaters which is cool because yeah. it helps build this it helps put the pressure on to you know deliver the goods which is very cool. Yep. Who was your favorite of the little mutant group? Did you have one? One of those guys was John Cena, right? Yeah, the rhino. I love how he just pops up in random spaces. Yep, that was weird. <laughs> that I was lo- weird. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I, I think putting a uh, splinter aside. Yeah. I really liked uh, Mikey and uh, the gecko. I really liked their relationship. 
you know, it, it was, they were just a pair of goofballs just having fun. And I enjoyed that. Yeah, I like them too. And really all the bad guys, you know, they didn't have much to say. Some of them didn't have much to do, but they were all pretty cool looking. Did you like the like second secondary, secondary bad guy? The woman with the weird chin and neck. And she was like, at the very end, you know, at the very end, she was like, you know, we got to call him kind of thing. And it showed Shredder. The ones that were trying to milk the turtles, right? Yeah. I liked the, the you know, I liked the story. I like where they're going with that. But her, she, I mean, she's just okay. She didn't, she didn't scare me. She didn't give me the goosebumps. I'm not scared of her right now. So hopefully they build her up a little more if she's going to be in the sequel. I hope Shredder kills her and Shredder's like, this is now under, you know, <gasps> this is all under my control now kind of thing. Oh, that'd be hope awesome. hope that's what happens because she's like a nothing character. Yeah. She's just a catalyst right now. That's where I'm We're hoping ahead. things kind of land. Yeah. Or start off, I guess, really in the first, in the, the sequel. I could see that being the introduction, oh, basically. Oh, that'd be awesome. So, not that I'm a fan of Shredder, and I don't really know who Shredder is, <laughs> to be to It's be funny, because when he popped up, you were like, is that Shredder? I was like, how do you know? That's... How did you immediately guess that? Like, two seconds in, and you were like, oh, that is that Shredder? <laughs> Let me get a good look at him, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's all I know. That's, all, that's the only way I can impress you with the turtles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't wait for the game that's coming out. It's a uh, gonna be unrelated to the proper turtle line, whatever that is. But it's gonna take place in a post-apocalyptic turtle timeline. Oh, okay. I think it's called Rise of the Ronin or the Last Ronin or something like that. Yeah, no, Rise of the Ronin is a different game. <laughs> the Last Ronin. That's it's being made by the guys who made destroy the destroy all human games. I was playing. Yeah, it's being made by them. Okay, it's gonna be their first proper big game. So we'll see how that goes. Their release date. Oh hell no! Oh no no just no they just first they just announced it like a month ago. So. Oh okay okay okay. So I'd expect maybe Ten late years. late 2025. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I mean they're actually owned by a studio. They're actually owned by a parent company who is under fire with big financial struggles right now. So there is no telling what happens with all of these mini games that that they're developing. Uh, we're about to have a, an implosion of IP and studios go places. That sucks. Yeah, Embracer Group is the name of that company. I think they're a Swedish company, and it looked like they were as a laundry money business, and then they got too big and stop people stopped buying drugs or or women or kids or whatever they were trafficking, and things are not working out. That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> All right, I well, know, right? Damn. Yeah, I know. These women, those Swedes, and kids. dude. Do you have any final thoughts for me? Yeah. So this movie reviewed pretty well. People really liked it. It reviewed super well. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, reading some of these reviews, a lot of people like to reference how nostalgic this uh, film was. Hmm. And It's that 90s thing again. Yeah, it's it's definitely that 90s thing. But I guess my issue was, or not necessarily an issue, just my thoughts there were there's not a nostalgia here for the previous you know TMNT movies there's a nostalgia here for the 90s the punk days I don't know it was just interesting to see everyone keep referencing how nostalgic it is although it has nothing to do with any of the other movies yeah it's nostalgia is unfortunately one of those words that we've completely fucked up and I um I can't wait until we all gather and at the funeral and stop using it. <laughs> but uh, what did you think about all the product placement here at the tail end of this? Product placement? Like the Papa John's pizza. I mean, <laughs> the, oh, the, the pizza, pizza hut. hut. And um, uh, there's some others, right? I can't. Yeah, there I were can't. others. Um, I can't think of any right now either. But I like those. I like when there's kind of funny things like that being incorporated some people have a big issue with that kind of stuff why i don't yeah just bitching the bitch i guess it, but it makes you connect more I how's guess. it not more immersive yes everyone's looking for this immersion we want it's not immersive enough like, there okay you go. 
takes place in New York. All right. We should have probably advertisement out the ass, which we don't really like on billboards and, um, you know, all the neon lights and shit that they have going around in New York, the screens and everything. But, but yeah, these things like pizza hut and I swear there were some others. They don't poke out. They don't, you know, they don't, they're not really in my head cause they, they just kind of help ground you in the world. So I don't, yeah. I don't quite remember them like some people might, but it does kind of help ground you. I, and I like that. It's not like the uncharted thing where there were, there was no product placement and then all of a sudden they were on a Papa John's and then, <laughs> uh, Mark Warburg's Sully is like, I'm in a Papa John's. It's just like, this is weird. <laughs> this, why did you say that? Just don't say that at the very least, uh... you know? <laughs> That's it's not hilarious. it's not quite like that. Although they do kind of shove the the pizza thing down your down your throat, which I think is kind of cute to be honest, I think. Yeah, I definitely agree. And there's probably there's probably a lot of that in their room. So it makes sense. And I'm 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 visualizing some like movie posters and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um on the walls. Yeah, I I I'm I'm with you. I thought i saw like quite a bit of would you call it product placement and um yeah i'm for it i like it i'm there yeah definitely where it makes sense i i I only bring that up just because you asked about it in a previous episode i can't remember you asked what it was called and i it didn't dawn on me until later but and it's very apparent here but uh and i don't know if i heard anyone i didn't i didn't see anyone bitching about this because you know it's a coherent effective complete movement movie so it's you know no one's gonna no one a few people are gonna bitch about things that are actually good right so that's whatever but a similar thing kind of happened in spider-verse too especially with the the jordans the yes. retro ones and stuff and the sony products you know he only uses sony well man thank you for watching this film with me thank you for letting me watch this film you're welcome i let you out of the cage and you were allowed to watch this film thank you now i have to go back in yeah get back in there (laughs) do you have a budget guess for me today man i do and this was hard not not too hard because you know animation and semi biggish you know nickelodeon although they don't have a lot out yet there's a little bit of a mold to it i think for sure yeah it's like for every minute it's gonna cost this much that seems to almost be a standard but what what, what you thinking i went with 80 million 80 million yes all right that's a good guess 70 million it says it's a good guess yeah it went on to make 166 million and i think it's still showing in theaters okay so it's definitely making money at this point and so that's that's very good congratulations and so I'd fully expect, especially coming out of Nickelodeon and Paramount, I would fully expect a sequel. Good, 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 good. So we're in, we're in good shape from that angle, at least. I hope we are in decent hands. I hope, I mean, I hope Jeff Rowe is behind the wheel again. Yeah. Or at least a major producer on it or co-director or some something of that nature. But yeah, man, that was it's a good watch. Do you have a game for me today? That is the ultimate question. I do have a game for you today. It's another rapid fire. Not too many. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Vegetarian or Hawaiian pizza? What's on Hawaiian pizza? Is that like ham and pineapple? Yeah, ham and pineapple. Yeah, Hawaiian pizza. Over vegetarian? Probably. I mean, I'd like to try the vegetarian <laughs> as long as it doesn't have onion on it. Like a spinach, black olive... Maybe mushroom. It probably has mushroom. Olive and oil instead of like more of like a Greek pizza type thing. I could get I could get on with that. Oh, okay. But I'm gonna now. I'm definitely gonna gravitate towards the Hawaiian pizza. Pineapples. I mean, it's. I know that's people fucking die on that hill. If that it's the best thing you know to put on pizza, it's it's okay. It's it's fine. It's good. Yeah, if I'm starving, I'll eat it. The problem with pineapple is i guess sometimes it's just not a lot of times it's just not ripe and so it it's hard and gross my problem is when you put it in the microwave it just doesn't heat it doesn't reheat right would all the juices come out and fuck up yeah the pizza? i don't know it like dries up i don't know it's just something and i'm 
Yeah, I'd I'd probably pick Hawaiian too, but I'm probably gonna be picking out the pineapples. <laughs> so I. That's fine. I might too if they're not good pineapples. <laughs> All right, kung fu or wrestling? Like, oh, I guess I'd rather learn kung fu. Okay, I'm gonna go with kung fu too. All right, being a teenager in the '90s or being a teenager now? Um, the '90s. The nineties, why? I think uh people I think you had a chance of be- being cultured if you were pre two thousands, born pre two thousands. And I think if you're born today you are gonna be so corrupted by social media and YouTube and outrage outrage culture that you're gonna you're just gonna be too conspiratorial, you're gonna be too jaded and cynical. It's just there's no chance for any happiness you know you don't have you're not going to be grounded in one one instance of your life and it's that's uh you know it's an unfortunate life i think and if you care about video games the only way you're going to be able to play those games is is if you grew up with them otherwise you're just not you're never going to be able to go back there's just too many games all right the wizard of oz or ghostbusters that's not even a question that is a question wizard of oz oh really yeah fuck the ghostbusters okay i I put that in because I thought you would be a Ghostbusters. Now, fuck the Ghostbusters. Not fan, but at least something. <laughs> yeah, nothing. I'm an anti-Ghostbuster. Oh, you're anti-Ghostbusters. Fuck the Ghostbusters, dude. Oh, my God. So what about Wizard of Oz or Turtles? Wizard of Oz. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, Turtles are cool, though. Wizard of Oz, though, is very fucking cool. All right. The Wiz with Michael Jackson. You ever seen it? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> all right godzilla or kaiju superfly oh godzilla for real oh yeah yeah you answer these way too fast i'm done <laughs> you said it's rapid fire yeah but i want you to have a struggle oh, i guess you have to come up with some better questions yeah i'm done with the games <laughs> that was the last game people hope you enjoyed <sighs> All right, man. Well, thank you for watching this film with me, and thank you for talking about it, especially. I had a great time. Did you have a good time? Yep. Well, thank you guys for listening to this episode of The Film of Steins. You can tune in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for new episodes covering all sorts of movies. You can listen to us over on Patreon at patreon.com slash film Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all the goods. Not Stitcher. Rest in peace. But until next time, Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And that's a wrap for today's episode of The Film of Steins. Thanks for tuning in and joining us on our cinematic journey. We hope you enjoyed our discussion and gained some new insights and perspectives on the world of movies. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform, especially Patreon at patreon.com slash film and follow us on social media for more film-related content. We love hearing from our listeners, so if you have any feedback, suggestions, movie recommendations, or book recommendations, please feel free to reach out to us. Until next time, keep watching, keep loving the magic of movies. This is the Film of Steins, signing off.